wild times. The extinct or alive game. Yeah. I'll tee up a species. Okay. Something that, you know, maybe could, it's something that's deemed extinct, but could have hope. Right. Love it. Could Indeed. be a Lazarus taxon. Sure. Kyle, Indeed. you got to pull up picks as we go here. Um, Peter will go first as the layman. Tell us what you think. Sure. And sure. then Forrest will weigh in. I love this one. Classic. Let's start Classic. with a an animal that was declared likely extinct. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Chinese dugong. Um, the last sighting. Don't pull it up. Why? Uh, I'll, I'll explain why in a second. Okay. The continue. last sighting, confirmed sighting, was 25 years ago. Okay. okay. Pretty recent. There have been three unconfirmed reports in the last five years of the Chinese dugong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Forrest, tell us a little more about the species so that Peter I will, can weigh in. As soon as Peter tells me what a dugong is. A dugong is like one of those big, you know, instruments where it's got the thing and there's like a big... This is obviously an animal, so you have no, to... No, I know, but hold on. Hold on. Okay, sorry. So I'm saying, you know, that they have those instruments. It's called a gong. This is an animal that is just like your regular raccoon, except it makes the sound of a gong. It kind of like when it calls out, it's like dong, gong. Hence the name dugong. 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 Of course. And it looks like... A dugong. A raccoon. A raccoon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I was curious if you knew what a dugong was. No, um, I do not. <laughs> it's, you know what a manatee is? Yeah. It's yeah. a manatee. Oh, it's a water animal. Okay. Yes. Um, wow. It looks like, it looks like a plucked chicken <laughs> in the water. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> Chinese dugong is a subspecies of dugong. Obviously, there's a handful. Actually, you should look this up, Kyle. How many species of, I guess, dugong? But no, because I'm, I'm curious of the group of manatee and dugong together. I'm not sure what the name is. It, it does look like a manatee with Type arms. Type in manatee. I think dugong are a subset of manatee. I love that we have actual photos of this animal, though. That's really... Well, those are probably just two nope. gone. Just go back to the images. Three and species. Then go to that first picture right there. Oh, yeah, Sirenians, duh. Named Siren. after Sirenians. Sirens because sea cows, dugongs, manatees used to be thought as sirens. Right. Well, right, all right. people, duh. Um, anyway, all right, well, there they are there. Anyway. Chinese dugong was a, was a subspecies, I believe, of the West Indian manatee um, or West Indian dugong. And I believe that could be wrong. And this animal has just recently in the last couple of weeks been declared extinct because as uh, okay. Patrick said, there's only seen three of them in the last 25 years or so. No matter what the, uh, the Chinese dugong, whether it's actually extinct or functionally extinct, which means there's no way it can bound back. Mm -hmm. It's definitely gone. Okay, so can I get can I get deep on this for a second with you guys? Why not? Why not? Extinct or Alive was, I mean, not that I made that much TV, but, you know, all the shark weeks and the, the mysterious creatures in Extinct or Alive. Extinct or Alive was the best show that I've ever made and ever been a part of. And this is why it's so upsetting. Because if Extinct or Alive was still around... This news, I mean, granted, if it was still going, you probably would have done this animal already. But if it wasn't, and this news had come out, and we had the kind of creative freedom that I'd always wanted, which I thought we were getting closer to, we could have been like, all right, the next episode we're doing, six months from now, three months from now, whatever, is on the Chinese dugong. This animal is functionally extinct, but they have found three of them in the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Let's narrow it in. Chances are we'll get a sighting of one or a glimpse of one or maybe even film one. And then for millions of people around the world who, just like you, Peter, had never even didn't even know what a fucking dugong was, they would get a chance to see what a Chinese dugong was before it's gone. And maybe doing a show like Extinct or Alive would have enough impact to start a breeding program, to section off an area, just something. Sure. Right, right, but now, right. and I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be grandiose and assuming that Extinct or Alive like changed the fate of all these species, but like it would have been something as opposed to what's happened now, which is this will be a couple headlines in a couple newspapers in very small places that people won't read because right. it's doom and gloom news, and that'll be it. That'll be the fate sealed for the Chinese dude. And people like me will have never known or heard of, of what, what they are. Right. We'll just keep watching. Right. Manatees are endangered too, aren't they? Uh, mm, maybe, maybe. I think they are endangered. I'm not sure. You'd have to look up their status. Man, um, it's getting sad with the manatees. They're all just like sliced up by boats and stuff nowadays. Oh my goodness. Poor yeah. sea cows. Um, all right, let's go to the next one here. Uh, yeah. Japanese river otter. Yep. Extinct or alive? It was declared extinct in 2012. River otters are so cute. They're so, They're cute. so fucking cute. 
That's um, why. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So it was declared extinct in 2012. Last confirmed sighting was 1979. It's a while ago. Um, reports and sightings are continuous, though, mm-hmm. like yep. so many extinct animals. You don't know if those are legit or not. Uh, it was heavily hunted for its pelt, mm-hmm. which was sought after, right? Because it lives in rivers, right? Yeah. It's a nice warm fur. People Ugh. wanted the pelts. Highest density of any animal, I think. So really? Fur density. Otters, I We're believe talking so. 43 years since the confirmed sighting. Yep. Declared extinct 10 years ago. Uh, Japan. Forest. What do you think? Had it on my list as potential to still be alive, for extinct or alive. A lot of reported sightings, a lot of interesting footage. In fact, Kyle, you might even be able to go to videos. There was one... No, I don't. Oh, yeah, maybe it's that one. I don't know. A lot of interesting videos of clips of what looks like an otter. Um, I think that, and mustelids are very smart, right? They're weasel sure. family. We've talked so about this. So this is purporting to be, I don't know that it was actually filmed in Japan, but it's saying first time a river otter has been spotted in 38 years is a trail cam video of an otter. Okay. Interesting. So yeah. anyway, my answer, although it's unlikely, still alive. Okay. I, I, I wanted to go and search for this one. I had a feeling about it. I, it's one of those ones that I don't, I can't sit here and give you a bunch of logic as to why. I just think mustelids, they're smart. They're very reclusive. I mean, I've been in areas like in Northern California where I'm like, I know there are like 12 otters that live in this little lake, this lake that's like three times the size of this house, not a right. big lake. Right. Mm-hmm. Can't find them. Sat there for like <laughs> hours and hours with binoculars in a, in a hide looking for them. Don't see them once. So what? Would your what would the, some of the tactics have been Ooh. to try and lure an otter onto <sighs> Man, a camera? Yeah, that's so tough because otters are so smart. Like the mustelids are so smart. I think you'd have to do a bunch of like fish piles and mounds and try and get them to come and take a free meal. Mm-hmm. A bunch yep. of trail Sushi. cameras, obviously. Yeah. Entry exit points at waterways, so like okay. water, wa- like uh, game po- game trails that lead to and from the water. Right. Um, calls. Otters are pretty vocal. Okay. Do some otter calling. What's, what's an otter sound like? Do you know? Can you make it? I know. I cannot make it. Project it, like, it through a speaker. Uh, yeah. Um, it's very cute. Okay. Yeah, they're goddamn. I mean, they're so cute. Here, I, I, <clears throat> oh, we're going to hear it? Oh, like squeaky? Oh, Charlie, you don't like that. Right, He's there, that's the sound I was waiting for. <laughs> Look at the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't do it. That's a pretty dope. <laughs> But you could do some of that calling in a valley, yep. you know, and then there's a new thing. Actually, this is kind of interesting and then we'll move on. Sorry, I don't mean to dog like for too long, but um, oh man, I'd have to find this company. You could probably find it, Kyle. I reached out to someone right as Extinct or Alive got canned. I had just started talking with this woman, I blanking on her name now, who was working on for lack of a better term, sound trail cameras. So there was AI in the cameras okay. that would record certain sounds um, and it would tell them when to turn on and not turn on certain frequencies and things like that. And then the AI program would run through the sounds and be like, here are the sounds you're looking for. Here are the ones that are close oh, matches, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, and right. um, I can't remember the name of the company. It was, it was some bioacoustic monitoring, this or that, but it was so clever. And so for something like a woodpecker or this otter, well, it or something sounds vocal, like there's a woodpecker in here right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Charlie's really loud. He's, that otter noise really made him. Yeah, he freaked out. <laughs> anyway, that would have been a good, good. Tool yeah, that would have been, that would have been awesome. Yep. Cool tech. Yeah, cool tech. I mean, yeah. I would say that all you would have to do to find one of these is go ask one of the uh, Japanese guys who has one as a pet. Hundred percent. Yep. Fact was- without question. Alive. Still alive. There you go. And owned as pets. Hidden. That's it. They're cute. I mean, I could see having one as a it's pet. It's a pet. It's a pet animal that you would just love to have. You feed it sushi. You you know you have a good time. They like opening little things with their hands. They it's love it. Toys. Um. All right. One more on the Extinct or Alive game. Yep. We're going to take it small. We're going to take it to the amphibian world. Mm -hmm. All right. The Splendid Poison Frog. You know what this thing is? I do. You heard of it? You know what it is, Peter? Of course not. (laughs) Okay. So declared extinct only two years ago in 2020. Very recent. It's, you know, one of the species of poison frog that was found in Panama. Mm Mm-hmm. Been declared extinct, this little guy. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's a poison dart frog. It's sort of similar to the golden toad, 
saga uh-huh. where, you know, we've talked about the golden toad a couple times, which is the first amphibian species to be wiped out by chytrid fungus, um, which was in Costa Rica and Panama. And then this guy basically followed and just a few years ago was the last when they declared him extinct. Unlike the golden toad, when chytrid fungus came out, the golden toad was wiped out in like five years, okay. like a couple years. I don't know how long the timeline was, but it was just like, bam, they're gone. Right, Mm -hmm. which means that that disease, that fungus, ran rampant through them and just took them out. Sure. Whereas these guys have stayed alive and around, slowly dwindling for many years. Now, the reason that I'm saying that the splendid poison frog is still around is when a species has that many, that much longevity through a virus or a fungus, it builds up. One or two of those individuals or 10 or 20 or whatever will build up an immunity to it and the population will dwindle way the fuck down. And then hopefully the animals that have this immunity will reproduce and the new population, the new offspring Ah. will come in with, with a population that has substantial immunity to something like chytrid fungus. A perfect example is withering foot syndrome. So there's this disease called withering foot syndrome that broke out on all of the abalone in Northern California. Oh, yeah. And it was like, oh, we're fucked. There's no more abalone. They're gone. And we basically thought that. I mean, there were a few here and there, but it was like they're gone. And then they just all bounced back. And what we found, is it abalone or starfish? Am I mixing these two up? Withering uh, foot? I think that was abalone. I have to check. There's a couple of them that have broken out. But anyway, let's just say I'm correct on this one. And basically what happened was all of the ones that are still around... Yeah, it's in abalone. Okay, withering abalone. Um, no, type in withering foot starfish. It might be the star. Yes, okay, it was the starfish. Withering abalone is different from withering foot syndrome. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is all irrelevant. It, it, <laughs> the point is that this disease went through these mollusks, and then they were like, they're gone. We've lost them all. And it was like, oh, wait a minute. There's like a tiny population of them here and a couple of them here and a little pocket here. And right. all of these ones that are still alive are immune to withering foot syndrome. Right. And now the species has bounced back and withering foot syndrome doesn't even exist anymore because they basically it knocked their population way down. Mm-hmm. And then the animals that slowly died out over many generations, like the poison dart frogs, right. the ones that remained were ones that had actually somehow built up an immunity or a tolerance that had evolved to be able to adapt to this, this problem and then they built up a new population that was resilient to it. And okay. so that's a very long way of saying that I think that the, the poison frog is still alive because of the longevity of the die-off. Wild times. So if you want more behind-the-scenes stuff, stuff that we cannot show on YouTube, Darwin Awards, video breakdowns and reviews, check out the Patreon. It's full of hours and hours of incredible exclusive content, stuff that you guys are going to love. Swipe up, click the link, do the thing. Come and hang out on Patreon. See you guys there.